Hi everyone. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been shipping out a lot of orders. Uh, really just in the past week alone, I shipped out over 150 orders. And during that time, I was also getting a lot of questions and comments um, from those of you and others about my shipping practices. How I do that, what do I think about calculated shipping versus uh, flat rate shipping or free shipping. Because of the timing of those questions and how much I've been shipping recently, I thought this was a great opportunity. And so this video, we're gonna keep this pretty casual and candid. I'm just gonna let you know kind of my thoughts on uh, the different shipping options out there and, and how I feel about them. And I should preface all of this by saying first, there are a lot of opinions on this and none of them are wrong. They're just differences, uh, different markets, different ways of handling things. There's a lot of options out there for a reason. And there's a lot of conflicting information about this as well. You might ask one person their thoughts on free shipping and they could be completely for it, ask someone else and they might be completely against it. And it doesn't mean that any one of them is wrong. There are lots of ways to approach this, which is why there are a lot of different opinions on the subject. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. And I obviously run this YouTube channel as well to help others in the candle industry with uh, information I've learned over the years, as well as education and demonstration of my practices and, and the way I run my business and make my products. So hopefully you enjoy this video. And if you are interested in checking out any other content, uh, just go to my channel page and click on videos and there'll be a lot of videos on several different topics if you'd like to check those out. Also, you can find me on Instagram at Black Tie Barn Candles, as well as several Facebook groups. And uh, in the description below, I'll have resources to those as well as several other resources that might help you as well. So be sure to check that out. And, and of course, uh, if you're interested in more content like this, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and a like, as that helps make sure the video continues to circulate to uh, to all of you. So I appreciate you being here. Let's, let's dive into today's topic. First thing I wanna do is really talk about the main three options, the most popular options when it comes to shipping your candles and melts or any other handcrafted items for that matter. The first and most default option is to simply do calculated shipping rates. And that means, Whatever your customers order, shipping is calculated and added on at the end of their order. And there are various ways to do that. You can do that by estimations of weight. You can do that with applications built onto your website, like Shopify has apps to help you do that. Um, and a lot of e-commerce sites have real-time calculated shipping built into their platform so that based off of the weight of your products, it knows how much to estimate shipping for your customer. And then of course, your customer pays the shipping at checkout. And, uh, and, and that's the default. That's kind of been the most common way to ship products um, for forever, right? However, another option is flat rate shipping, which is you have a sense, an idea of how many candles you can ship per box and what the weights of those would be. And then you can kind of create these shipping profiles. So you know that two candles, if you ship two candles, it might cost this on average. And so you can just offer flat rate shipping for a box of you know 10 by six by six that weighs three pounds, for example. Um, you might offer flat rate shipping on that. And you could offer, offer flat rate shipping on a 10 by 10 by 10 box that weighs up to 10 pounds. And so you have less real-time calculated options, but you're estimating what it would cost on average to ship your candles. And you create flat rate shipping prices based around those sizes and weights. That's also a very common way to do it. And there are pros and cons to that, of course, as you know, there are gonna be orders where you actually lose a little bit and you eat some of the costs and there's gonna be orders that you make up some of the costs. So it typically balances out if you do this uh, the right way and you're really diligent and take your time creating these shipping profiles. The third option, and this really the focus of today's video is, is whether you go with an option like that where you calculate shipping or offer different shipping rates separate from your products or whether or not you build the shipping into your cost of your item and you just offer free shipping across the board. That is really what I wanna talk about today because that is a very popular question when it comes to selling your items. Do I sell my products and charge shipping or do I offer free shipping on all orders and I just build that cost into my product? Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of offering free shipping. And then of course, a couple of myths and my general thoughts on offering free shipping and then how I handle my business currently. The first advantage to free shipping is that it's just much easier for you as a business owner. And the reason is, is because you're not having to deal with calculated shipping rates on an order by order basis. Instead, you're simply saying all of my candles ship, all my orders ship free. You don't have to worry about that. Whatever the label costs you to ship it, you pay it and you move on. And 
The reason it's easier is because you're just increasing the price of your product to help compensate for the shipping cost. That's all you're doing. And so you're not having to deal with real-time shipping rates order by order. So that's a very a very good advantage to offering free shipping for sure. But you have to do your homework and make sure you price your candles accordingly to be able to uh, to make sure that you're you're covering your cost and you're not losing money or overcharging customers. The next advantage to offering free shipping, and this is the one you see the most often uh, thrown out there, and that is simply the psychology of offering free shipping to your customers. There's a lot of research on this. There's a lot of information out there because when it comes to marketing, advertising, products, consumers, psychology is almost everything. And, and there's reasons why customers do or do not do things. So there is a lot of information out there about the incentive uh, it creates for customers to purchase from you if you offer free shipping. They will see the cost of your product. They are happy when they get to check out that there's no additional charges or fees like shipping. And they just see that no matter what I order, it's shipping for free. And the psychology of that, um, there, that is a fact, that is true. However, there are two sides to every story. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute, but it is a, a definite advantage that customers appreciate free shipping. Knowing that they're gonna pay $20 for this product and that's it and no surprises at the end, uh, really can incentivize them to continue uh, rather than bail out and leave an abandoned cart during checkout. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute on the flip side, but that is a very obvious advantage uh, is the, the mental aspect, the psychology to purchasing for a customer. Think about it from your perspective. One of the reasons we like online shipping, we don't want to have to pay extra to get our products. And with services like uh, you know, free shipping to home and uh, or free delivery. Amazon's always got Prime and free delivery for the most most things out there. And so we, as a customer, as a generation, are getting used to the ability to get our products delivered to us for free or for nominal cost. And so if free shipping is something you're considering. Then this truly is a, is a big advantage. Now let's talk about a few disadvantages and drawbacks to offering free shipping. The first is that makes your products seem much more expensive. So this is the counter argument to the fact that the customers don't have to pay shipping. Instead, they see expensive products instead, right? And, and when I get to the myths section here in a few minutes, we'll dive a little bit more into this and why this is important. So if you are building the price of your shipping into your products, that is obviously going to increase the cost of your products. And the problem with this for customers is that the more items they order, this exponentially increases the, the, the amount that they are paying for shipping, even though they really shouldn't be. For example, when you buy one or two candles, that is kind of the biggest jump in shipping costs because you're going from zero shipping because you've not ordered anything to your first couple items, which usually jumps up to seven, eight, ten dollars wherever you're shipping to. That's a big jump. And then additional items usually don't add that much more onto your shipping rate. That's why I can ship 10 candles for maybe a buck more than it costs me to ship three candles. Because by the time you've already taken into account the size of the box and you can squeeze more candles in, the shipping cost does not continue to increase at the same rate as it does early on. And so because of that, your customers are almost getting punished for the increased price of your candles. So they see every candle, and instead of being $10 per candle, um, and then you just calculate shipping at the end, uh, you end up saying, I'm gonna charge $18 per candle every single candle. And so before long, it's not so much the shipping cost that customers become concerned with, they become concerned with the price of your candles. And so uh, a little bit more on that here in a minute, but I just wanted to cover that quickly. And, and then another disadvantage that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to offering free shipping is not all products are taxed the same. Uh, depending on where you're shipping, where your nexus is, where you're shipping from, your customers may or may not be paying taxes on the products themselves or uh, or maybe not on the shipping. However, when you roll the price into one, you're essentially increasing the price of your candle. And that means you're paying, their customers are paying taxes on the candle and there's no distinction between that and shipping. And that can often cost you a lot more in sales tax. And when I say cost you, it's not costing you because you're simply collecting sales tax, but it is costing your customer more often. And that also increases the burden of the tax taxes you have to collect and pay. There's no distinction between your product and the shipping charges. So it can make bookkeeping a little more challenging for you. It, it can kind of make your accounting difficult and less transparent to you. If you're, if you're really curious about how much your candles are profiting you 
on an item by item basis and you want to know your cost of goods and what your profit is, your gross profit plus your net profit after each sale, well, by folding your shipping charges into your product, that becomes more difficult to, to manage and to understand your revenue. And so that is another drawback is it's just less transparent for the customer and for you when you're doing your own internal bookkeeping and records. With those kind of basic advantages and disadvantages out of the way when we're talking about free shipping, let's talk about a common myth um, about free shipping. And when I say myth, it's not that it's not, there's no truth to this. It's just I think it's exaggerated and sometimes we take it as fact and we don't question it sometimes. And that is the argument that it's the same cost to the customer either way, whether you charge them for the candle and then add shipping at the end versus building the shipping cost into your candle and charging them that price instead. The argument is that to the customer, it's no difference in price, but psychologically it's a benefit to offer free shipping. They're paying the same, but the, the fact that they don't have shipping on top is, is an incentive. Well, we talked about, yes, there is an incentive knowing that there's not a shipping cost, but the argument that the cost is the same to the customer is absolutely untrue. And I wanted to talk about this and clarify this, and I touched on it a little bit earlier. So let me give you an example. If I sell one candle and one candle only, and let's say I sell this candle for $10, and let's say shipping on this one candle is $8, for example. If I were to turn around and sell this one candle with ship shipping built in for the same price of $18, then yes, those two are the same. One candle with $10 candle with $8 added on is $18, including shipping, or I can sell the candle for $18 and offer free shipping. In that situation, they are the same price. However, this argument is taken completely out of context because that does not tell the whole story. As I touched on earlier, what happens when I offer four of these candles? Okay, I can't really hold four, I don't think. But let's, let's say I were to offer four of those candles. Well, four of those candles, and I can tell you this from experience, if I sold all four of those for $10 a piece, and when I calculated and added shipping on at checkout, uh, the cost to ship the extra three candles in the, in, in the same or slightly larger box is maybe a buck or two more total. It might cost me $10 to ship all four of those candles. which means the net increase in shipping cost of the customer is only $2. So those four candles would be four times 10, which would be 40, plus we'll say another 10 for shipping. That's $50 for the four candles. Now, if you were to work the shipping price into the cost of your candle, like we did in the first example, selling only one, that was an $18 candle. Four $18 candles is $72. That's $22 more for your customer if you include or build in the shipping price into the price of your candles. So that example really just helps to paint a picture of the fact that building your shipping cost into your candle doesn't make it apples to apples. For your customers, it's not the same. It's not the same as paying shipping on the end or adding shipping into the cost of the product. And that's just a perfect example. And that's just one example. The truth is though, the more items they purchase, the more candles they buy from you, the more that that fact becomes true. So from your customer's perspective, adding the cost of shipping into the price of the candles can actually end up costing them more than if they were to pay shipping at checkout or as a separate line item. And that becomes more true the more items they purchase from you, the more candles they buy from you, the more melts, lotions, soaps, whatever, the more items they buy from you, the more they end up paying more if shipping's included in the price of the candles. So in reality, your customers are actually de-incentivized by you building the cost of shipping into your product. Now, many of them will not necessarily catch that early on or even realize that, especially if they're only buying one or two products at a time. But customers are savvy, they understand, and it will not take long for them to realize that I am paying a lot more for high price candles that already include shipping versus me picking the products I want and letting me decide at the end whether or not it's worth it for me to pay shipping. Because yes, on a one or two item purchase, it can look more attractive to customers to build the shipping into the price of your item. They see a $20 candle that includes shipping, no other charges at the end, all said and done. They buy the item and they move on. And even up to two candles, something like that, that makes perfect sense. But anything beyond that, it really starts to become expensive as the price of your candles just compound on each other. And that is because the, the, the bulk of the 
price that it costs you to ship a product is really that initial cost is what the, makes up the bulk of your shipping prices, right? So um, like I said, if you're selling shipping nothing, the price is zero. And if you ship one thing, the price to ship can jump up to like eight or $10. As you add items to that order, it does not increase the cost of shipping at that same rate. So it's not like every single time you add a candle to an order, your shipping cost is going up by another $8 or $10 in shipping. So that is why it's important to understand that uh, building the, sh the price of shipping into your candles is actually going to end up costing your customers significantly more over the long run. Now, you may see that as a benefit because you might profit from this in the more in the long run. But again, it de-incentivizes your customers to pr from purchasing more from you. So this is really can often be a counterproductive method because you end up incentivizing customers to go ahead and buy one or two from you, but it might limit customers from putting in larger orders with you. So uh, just kind of understand that and decide which way you want to approach that. But I just, I did want to spend a few minutes talking about that because that argument that it's apples, apples, and it's the same co cost of the customer either way is not exactly true. And it's often exaggerated or taken out of context. So yes, shipping charges at checkout can be a turnoff, but so can high product prices, which leads me to uh, the next little myth here. And that is about abandoned checkouts, abandoned carts at checkout because of shipping. Now that is not a myth. That is true. There are a lot of customers that will create carts and then when they go to checkout, they see the cost of shipping and they abandon it. But yes, undoubtedly shipping charges can be a turnoff. And sometimes that can lead customers to abandon their cart. And there's a lot of research out there that talks about abandoned cart rates and that a certain percentage of customers by the time they reach checkout end up abandoning their carts. However, some of that information is misleading because there are a lot of other factors and reasons that lead to abandoned carts at checkout. That's not always shipping. Sometimes it's just the overall cost of the order. They feel like, oh, free shipping, let me just start adding a bunch of items. And then they get to checkout and realize, well, each one of those items was $25 because shipping was included in the price of the product. And now for four candles, I end up having over a $100 order. And that is also a turnoff. So it's not always just about the shipping cost that lead to abandoned carts. It's just the overall cost. And if you're items are priced so significantly to go ahead and encompass and incorporate shipping into their price, that can be just as much of a turnoff and lead to just as many abandoned carts as shipping can. We all feel like we're pressured into offering free shipping because of expectations by our customers. And again, we talked about this earlier. Amazon, uh, free delivery by you know Walmart or whatever has led people uh, like us to believe that we have to compete with that. And the only way to compete with that is to offer free shipping. But that's not necessarily true. Expectations by customers are different for companies like Amazon than they are for home uh, home businesses or handcrafters such as us. They understand that there's a cost to make our products and there's a cost to ship our products. And most customers are going to be okay with that. They're supporting you as a handcrafter and as a home business, and they understand that there's a cost to ship products. As long as your overall costs are fair and reasonable and you're providing value to your customers, I ship candles every day throughout the year and very rarely have I ever had a complaint about shipping. And if I do, it's usually because it's going somewhere that it's, it's extremely far. Um, I've even shipped some to uh, international. And those can be quite expensive, obviously, but you know, for very far distances, flat rate shipping from USPS is fine. If you offer other shipping services like UPS Ground, that can save you some money as well, as well as the customer. But for the most part, I, I've shown videos in the past that I've, I've shipped 15 candles at once in a single 12 by 12 box and end up shipping the whole thing for $12. Uh, and if it's going really far, it might be $20. But still, when you break that down, that's minimal. You're talking a dollar or $2 per candle to ship. However, if you would have worked that price of shipping into your candle product and priced it, uh, that way, then your the order would have been much more expensive for the customer. So it's often more beneficial and cost effective to do real time calculated shipping rates at checkout. Um, and again, most e-commerce e websites uh, have that option uh, depending on the plan you choose. Finally, what do I do? Well, many of you have purchased from me or have seen my uh, previous videos and demonstrations or have checked out my website. Um, and I do change this up uh, a little bit here and there. But overall, I stick to real-time shipping, calculated shipping rates. Um, I have never really had any problems doing that. Yes, just like everyone else, if you're buying one or two candles, it doesn't seem worth it. I might sell a $10 candle, and depending on where you are, it may cost $8 to get it to you just for the one candle. But again, for two candles, it's basically the same price. And then up to four or six candles, it's maybe a dollar more than that. Because calculated shipping rates, again, most of the cost of shipping is front-loaded, meaning there's a big jump in cost from zero orders to that first order 
uh, to that first box. And then the more you add to that box, the larger your shipment becomes. Um, they, the shipping rate doesn't continue to grow at the same rate. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. But I really like the calculated shipping rates because it's, it's the most fair. It's the most reasonable. You're not trying to guess. You're not trying to take advantage of a customer. The customer doesn't think that you're trying to take advantage of them. Everything's based off of their order, specifically the items in their cart, their location, the weight of their order. And it's, so it's the, it's the most fair. And again, the more items your customer orders, it's actually cheaper for them. So for example, some of my most expensive orders can be 18 to 20 candles at a time for a regular customer, and they might only spend $20 or less on shipping. That's pretty good. I mean, that's like a dollar a candle on shipping at most. So uh, I, I just really prefer for that method. It is the most fair because it is specific to them. Your candles are, can still be priced attractively on your website. So I don't have to change the price of my candles to compensate for that. I can sell my candles at good, attractive rates. And that's what gets them in the door. Remember, first impressions get people to your site. If they show up at your site and they see a candle that already includes shipping for a very high price, they might just walk away immediately. They might say, I don't care if there's free shipping. I'm not paying $40 for a candle, as an example. And I'm not saying that's always true, but just, just as an example. But if they go to your website and see, all oh, right, he's got great looking candles and it's only $12 for that candle, um, they'll spend more time on your website, more engagement, and yes, you will still have abandoned checkouts. That's the nature of e-commerce. There's no getting away from abandoned carts. But the longer they spend on your site, the more items that they add and more time that they engage with you, the less likely they are to leave your website. If they get first impressions that their your costs are too high, they might just leave right away. So I, I prefer the method of, of having reasonably and attractive pricing on my products and then calculating the shipping as appropriate. I have never had any issues doing calculated shipping rates. So that is my go-to method. However, that being said, I do also offer free shipping over certain amounts spent. I change that depending on the time of the year. Um, and I also offer that to the continental United States, which is, which is where I'm at. I do not offer that outside of the continental United States because that would become way too expensive. I, I have done that by mistake and ended up with a $75 shipping bill <laughs> for a free order. Um, so I ended up uh, breaking even basically on that order. Just kind of do your research and, and see what works best for you. But I just wanted to talk about this topic because everyone seems very focused on, I have to offer free shipping. I have to offer free shipping. And I get it. A lot of services and products out there do that these days. But keep in mind that your a candle business isn't the same as someone um, selling very lightweight options, that it's very easy for them to offer free shipping. Heavy objects like glass, wax, you know, candles, are difficult to offer free shipping without hurting you a little bit as well. So, um, or because you're trying to compensate for it, you end up overcharging your customers by building it into your price of your products. Hope you find this interesting. And again, let me reiterate, there's no right or wrong here. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about these. This is uh, my explanation of why I do what I do at the moment and a little bit of a deep dive into some of the uh, myths that are taken a little bit out of context when it comes to offering free shipping. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this helpful, informative, uh, inspirational, <laughs> whatever you want to do with this information. Hopefully uh, it helps you realize that there isn't, you know, one size fits all solution. There isn't a right answer on this question and it's going to vary by business and vary on what you're trying to accomplish. Hopefully you can use this information to make a better decision for yourself and feel like you don't have to be pressured into um, and, and to following a certain type of shipping method. Uh, whether you do flat rate shipping, free shipping, calculated shipping, it's completely up to you. I just wanted you to know some of the extra information out there um, so you can make the best decision for yourself that you can and realize that there are options. Thanks for tuning in as always, and we will see you next time. Thanks.